Royal Wingman for the USAF's B-21 Stealth Bomber revealed. The Chief of the United States Air Force has praised the Loyal Wingman program in Australia and is preparing to push the government of that country to make investments in more AI initiatives as a top priority. You will find all the updates in today's video, so welcome back to Vehicle Radar. Let's see what is happening in the Ghost Bat program, and if you're still confused about what it is, please watch till the end of the video. Let's dive into more details. The participation of the Air Force Secretary, Frank Kendall, who commands 700,000 military people and is responsible for the department's $237 billion budget, will serve as a significant vote of confidence in the nation's industrial and defense industries. It has been more than a half a century since Australia last developed, produced, and constructed a military aircraft of its own. The Loyal Wingman Program, which was later renamed the Ghost Bat Program, is the first such project since then. As a result of its usage of artificial intelligence, it was once known as an Australian project and can fly alongside both human and unmanned aircraft while they are in flight. Kendall was quoted as saying, The bet that I'm making in the Tech Air case is that we are going to move through with uncrewed combat aircraft. Specifically, he was referring to the possibility of using unmanned aerial vehicles. We are going to make use of the technology that is being developed as a result of initiatives such as the Australian Loyal Wingman Program and others. And we are going to integrate that technology into our operational capabilities. This will be the first time that we have ever done anything remotely similar to what we are going to accomplish now. In my opinion, the technology necessary to do this is already accessible right now. In addition, I do not feel that it is essential for us to wait for more developments about that matter. I believe that we can go forward now. At this point, I'm putting a lot more of my focus on the quality of what I do as opposed to the quantity. Before they were published in the Australian Financial Review, his remarks were initially presented to the Brookings Institution, which is a think tank located in the city of Washington in District Columbia, United States. The U.S. military community holds Frank Kendall, who is now serving as the 26th Secretary of the Air Force in high esteem, as one of the most powerful and important individuals in the field. As part of his responsibilities in this position, he oversees the organization, instruction, and provision of the United States Air and Space Forces. He has over 50 years of experience and has held the position of Vice President at Raytheon in the past. In April of the previous year, President Joe Biden was the one who handed him the appointment that put him in his current role. Acceleration of the Loyal Wingman program is planned for this year, with a particular emphasis on sensor and missionization capabilities. The manufacturer of the aircraft collaborated with the Royal Australian Air Force, the RAAF, to design the aircraft, which has a length of 11.7 meters, a range of 2,000 nautical miles, and the ability to produce performance comparable to that of a fighter, while also providing intelligent capabilities. The finalized ATS design will use an existing lightweight turbofan engine whose make, model, and output are currently unknown. It is estimated to have a range of 2,300 miles and the ability to operate effectively over land and water. The aircraft's current design, largely developed in Australia, features an extended nose section, side-mounted intakes for the sole engine installation, shoulder-mounted wing main planes, and V-style tail unit. No horizontal tail planes are featured. The main planes have an unbroken swept back leading edge and a compound trailing edge that is swept forward, inboard panel, and swept back, outboard panel. To promote inherent stealthiness, chaining is used around the edges of the fuselage, and a traditional tricycle undercarriage is featured for ground running. The air vehicle currently has an overall length of 38 feet, though other dimensions are unknown. Internally, the drone's mission payload will include various intelligence surveillance reconnaissance fits via modular systems approach, allowing for quick equipment exchanges as needed per sortie. Aside from that, the ATS will have an electronic warfare capability to improve its over-battlefield value. Unmanned aerial vehicles are built with the capability of using artificial intelligence to fly autonomously or in support of human aircraft while keeping a safe distance between themselves and other aircraft. Following the first successful flight of the Loyal Wingman in February of 2021, the Australian government first placed an order for three of them, but they all have subsequently increased the number of the fleet to six. In November, Boeing made the report that two Ghost Bat prototypes had completed independent test flights in the Woomera Range Complex in South Australia. These test flights had been conducted by Boeing. 
This was the most significant accomplishment that the program had to this point. Over 35 local businesses have taken part in the initiative so far. White Horse and Form 2000, two Australian small and medium-sized enterprises, have worked together on the production of build-to-print components for the airplane. Other local businesses that have taken part in the initiative so far include more than 35. Other companies, including Vera Engineering, AME Systems, Ally Data Systems, and Microelectronic Technologies. Reports indicate that the top official for the United States Air Force has declared that the organization would no longer pursue a plan to link to the Northrop Grumman B-21 Raider Stealth Bomber with an unmanned combat drone of comparable size. The question of value is cited as the justification presented. According to Breaking Defense, the decision would be a U-turn after Air Force Secretary Frank Kendall confirmed at the end of the previous year that the service would be seeking funding for two classified remotely piloted air combat vehicles. Breaking Defense states that the confirmation came under the previous year. Within the scope of this notion was the possibility of combining unmanned aerial warfare vehicles with the B-21. According to Breaking Defense, the decision will include a complete about-face. According to Breaking Defense, Kendall is quoted saying that several months have passed since those initial discussions, and now the Air Force is having second thoughts about constructing a combat drone to match with the next bomber because of the perception and value. Kendall's comments were made about the fact that the Air Force wants to match the capabilities of the combat drone with the next bomber. According to what he stated on the website, the notion of a similar range collaborative combat aircraft is not turning out to be cost feasible, which translates to, it looks like we're not going to follow that way, which indicates that it seems like we're not going to pursue that option. The military concluded after examining the possibility of manufacturing an armed unmanned drone counterpart for the B-21 that it would be less enticing than we expected it may be. As a direct consequence of this, the choice was made to abandon the endeavor. According to what he told the source, the key reason for this was the expense of developing an airplane that was equal in size to the one that already existed. When applied to platforms of more modest size, the elimination of crew members totally can result in considerable cost savings. According to Kendall, but for big platforms, you don't gain that much as the crew is only a small fraction of the weight, which is likewise a small fraction of the expenditure by comparison. And while the Air Force won't be pursuing the concept with the B-21, it's still considering the loyal wingman approach of pairing combat drones with fighter aircraft, such as the next generation air dominance, fighter, the F-35, or the F-22, he added. Although the Air Force won't be pursuing the concept with the B-21, it is still considering the loyal wingman approach. The Air Force is still taking into consideration this strategy, although it won't be pursuing the notion with the B-21. Kendall's a strong supporter of the concept of combining unmanned air combat platforms with piloted aircraft, such as the sixth generation NGAD fighter that he has stated has the potential to be operational by the end of the decade, to build mass in a manner that's both cost-effective and efficient. He has been a strong proponent of this idea for some time now. At the beginning of this year, he was quoted as saying, we need to introduce some lower cost systems to have an inexpensive Air Force of any realistic size. And that ends today's episode. We'll be back with more cool stuff like this, so please hit that like button and subscribe to our channel for more. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.